Phenomenal news! My new novel, Ghost Hunters Adventure Club and the Express Train to Nowhere, is now available for purchase. This is a story about three idiot wannabe detectives in my personal quest to make as much profit off of them as possible. JJ and Valentine Watts and their new friend, Trudy De La Rosa, are riding a train on official Ghost Hunters Adventure Club business, when an old friend from their past shows up to ruin everything. Now it's up to them to solve the mystery before they're locked away forever for a crime they didn't even commit. There's action, there's humor, there's suspense, but most importantly, there's a detailed set of instructions hidden within these pages that will help both you and me get rich beyond our wildest dreams. Pick it up now in hardcover novel or as an audiobook, read personally by me, Dr. Cecil H.H. H. Mills. Last time on Game Grubs! Let's chat again since you're so friendly now. Could I ask you some more questions? No. Alright, I'm gonna go. Since and Daddy's message isn't quite right, Gabriel rubs it off in frustration. He's about to rub it off in frustration. Don't take that out of context. Gabriel! Malia? It's Malia. So it would appear that the woman that you're in love with is possessed by the spirit of the demon witch who you've been searching for. There you go. That's huge information. Gabriel Knight is from a long, long line of badass demon hunters. God, I love this game. Hey, I'm Dan. I'm also Dan. Dan. Hello there, and welcome to episode 8 of Gabriel Knight. Uh, Shadow Hunter. Hell yeah! Um, Alright, so we just talked to our Uncle Wolfie, and, um, or we just tried to, and we couldn't get a hold of him, but it's clear that we need to now fly to Germany, um, call this travel agency, see the world travel agency, um, which is very convenient because it keeps us on the C page, which is where the veterinary clinic and Casino were. And now we can set up a little something. I, you know what, I don't, I've never done it, but I bet if you call any of these numbers in the game, they have something uh, recorded for each of them. Um, that's actually funny, canker sore, I never put that together. Um, but let's, uh, let's do what we're supposed to do. See the World Travel Agency. How may I help you? Okay. Um, Rittersburg, Germany. How much for a trip to Rittersburg, Germany? Rittersburg, Germany. Hold on, let me look that up. I can fly you into Munich. That's the closest airport to Rittersburg. You can rent a car from there or take the train. Let's see, the best price I can see for the flight is $1,400. What would you like to do? That's very expensive. Luckily, my dead friend will be paying for it. Charge it to my Americans repressed. Yes, sir. And your name was? Mosley. Feeling a little guilty, Gabriel gives the travel agent Mosley's card number and is informed that he can pick up his tickets at the Norlands International Airport. All right. Excellent. I'll have to take a car and stuff when I get there, but... That's fine. It'll all be in a cutscene. Let's just tell Gracie I'm getting the hell out of here. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Time to go to Germany. Guess what? I'm going to Germany. Really? That's great. But how on earth can you afford... A man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. Oh my god. I wouldn't like the sound of that even if you were a man. I'll miss you too, Grace. Aww. I'm sorry I got you involved in this, Grace. Don't worry about me. Just get yourself out of this mess. Any last things to say? Got any ideas, Grace? Yeah. Get out of town. You're so helpful. All right, time to go.
Goodbye, Grace. Goodbye, Gracie. Good luck. Let me know what's going on, will you? Of course. Are you gonna be okay here by yourself? I'll be fine. Just fix this, okay? I'm trying, Gracie. Lock the door. All right. Time to hit the airport. There we are. I do like that they set this up uh, loyally according to the actual New Orleans map. Gabriel picks up his tickets at the airport and boards a plane for Munich. Just kidding. Look at that. Wolfgang? Hello, my name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Herr Knight? Oh, kommen Sie bitte herein. I mean, come in please, Herr Knight. I was not expecting you. Has Wolfgang sent you here? Uncle Wolfgang? No, I came to see him. Isn't he here? No, he is gone. I'm sorry. You came all this way. No, oh, great. That's all I need. Herr Knight, Wolfgang told me all about you and gave me instructions for you to feel welcome here. Please, this is your home. You are a Ritter, no? I'm just doing some work. I will continue and you may make yourself comfortable. If there's anything you need, please ask me. You may use Wolfgang's bedroom. It is at the top of the stairs. Thank you, miss. You may call me Gerda, Herr Knight. Gerda, I promise I will be asking you a thousand questions. It's just how I roll. In fact, let's do it right now. Can I ask you a few questions? Yeah, of course. What can you tell me about voodoo? Wolfgang is the only one who would know about that. Tell me what you know about Schattenjägers. As Wolfgang may have told you, Schattenjäger means shadow hunter. The Ritter family have always been Schattenjäger. It is a kind of priesthood, though not as restrictive as most. Tell me what... Each Schattenjäger passes on his knowledge to a younger man in the Ritter line when the time is right. Tell me what you know about Schattenjägers. I am sure Wolfgang meant for you to take his place someday as Schattenjäger. Tell me about Wolfgang. What would you like to know? Where do you think Wolfgang went? I don't know, but I have a feeling he has gone off to be Schattenjäger again. He is too old for such chasing around. His heart is very weak. He has not left this castle for five years, and now this? Do you know when he'll be back? I only pray he will be back. Before he left, he said Schloss Ritter now belongs to Gabriel. It worried me so to hear him say that. I'm afraid Wolfgang knew he would never return. What's Wolfgang like? Wolfgang is a truly wise and good man, the best I have ever known. But his life has been so full of disappointments. What kind of disappointments? His only son died in infancy, so there was no one to carry on the family line. And the family's financial troubles have been hard on him. Wolfgang wanted to do so much for the world, but it was all he could do to just hold on to Schloss Ritter. He has not left his mark as he wished to. What is your relationship with Wolfgang? Herr Knight, my relationship with your uncle is really none of your business. You're right, Gerda. I apologize. Forget I asked. You kind of answered it. Can you show me Wolfgang's library? How do you know about his library? When we talked on the phone, he said he was going to do some research in his library. I thought maybe if I saw what he was researching... Ah, yeah! A good idea, Herr Knight. But I'm afraid I cannot show you the library. You see, I have never been in it. Only a Schattenjäger can enter the library. I see. Just tell me anything. Wolfgang has dedicated his entire life to the role of Schattenjäger. Oh, nothing. Never mind. As you like, Herr Knight. 
Tell me something about the Ritter family. I can tell you what they say in the village, what I heard when I was small. To the villagers, the Ritters are a little, how do you say, tragic, to be pitied. They say that the Ritters were chosen by God to fight evil. But something happened, one of them was cursed, and so the Ritters lost the way. They struggle still, but like a lame dog, you see, without the power or magic they once had. Probably due to the talisman being missing. Tell me something about the Ritter family. There are legends of how powerful the family once was, of some of their mighty deeds, of the richness of the castle and, in turn, Rittersberg itself. But at the end of the 17th century, that all changed. Since then, the Ritters and Rittersberg have been in decline. Tell me something about Schloss Ritter. Schloss Ritter has stood for many centuries. No one knows how long. It was once the pride of Bavaria, but now it is in disrepair. Wolfgang received offers to open the castle for tourists. He has resisted, though, even though the castle is in desperate need of repairs. To him, this ground is sacred. Tell me something about Schloss Ritter. The castle has many, many rooms and passages, Herr Knight. Most have been closed off and are decaying in the dark and damp. Only a few rooms have been kept up due to the cost. Didn't Wolfgang mention a library? There's a library, but I've never been in it. There are places in the castle where only the master is allowed to go. Tell me something about Schloss Ritter. Schloss Ritter is the center from which the Schattenjäger have always gone out to battle the forces of evil. Dope. So what do you do when you're not puttering around the castle? Every day, I go to Rittersberg to do the daily shopping and visit my friends. And I bone your uncle. Tell me something about yourself. I was born in Rittersberg, the village below the castle. One more thing. Tell me something about yourself. I am not well-traveled, but Wolfgang has been kind and has tutored me in many subjects. It was from him I learned to speak English. He must have sensed you were coming, Herr Knight, and that you would have need of me. Tell me something about yourself. I am very devoted to my position here with Wolfgang. Missionary. Just kidding. It's a lion's head, carved in stone. A few ancient weapons adorn the hall. This Shadowhunter stuff is serious. There's a dragon's head on the wall. Oh, I love tapestry stuff like this. A few tapestries hang on the wall. Gabriel isn't sure if they mean something or if they're just good insulation. It's a shaker of salt. Gabriel is sure he'll end up getting some of those for a meal sooner or later. Gerda wouldn't appreciate Gabriel messing with her lunch. I'll mess with whoever's lunch I want. At the moment, Gabriel can't think of a need for the salt. Lunch messer. Gabriel can't do much with the salt while it's on the desk. Okay. So we've got the chapel and the bedroom. Right, let's try the chapel first. Lovely. Tree panels hang from each side of the chapel. Gabriel can't determine what their purpose might be. Tree panels. Perhaps it's an illusion caused by the colored light from the window. But this chapel gives Gabriel a sense of something truly mystical. Candelabra flanked the altar. A magnificent stained glass window depicts the legendary battle between St. George and the dragon. There are pews on both sides of the center aisle. 
Okay. A plain wooden altar occupies the center of the chapel. A cushion kneeler at the bottom indicates that the altar is a place of prayer. Tree panel. I think that is all we can do in here for now. Let's try the bedroom. Okay. It's an old fashioned canopy with heavy bed curtains. A fire blazes steadily in the stone fireplace. It's the biggest bed Gabriel has ever seen. Cool. A gothic style window looks out over an incredible view. I love a good window seat. There's a window seat on either side of the window. Gabriel isn't interested in sitting at the moment. Okay. Man, I gotta get more sleep. It's okay, man. You've had a tough couple of days. A large display case hangs on the wall. It contains a scroll. This scroll looks interesting. Think I'm gonna start stealing stuff from the house. There's a small pair of grooming scissors on the cabinet. Okay, take those. Gabriel takes the scissors. Ew, a bedpan. It's a chamber pot. Take me back to the 20th century, please. I don't have to right now. Even if I had to, I wouldn't. Eh. Pee in the bowl, man. Let's do it. The cabinet holds a few items for personal grooming. Let's see what this poem is up here. The portal says, Nor dare Reinsdorf pass herein. Diesen hertz is rein wie glas. Diesen Ziele rein wie feuer. Schreitet heuer dirks per tau. Okay. Clearly I've got to do something here. Maybe Gerda knows what's up with that poem. Can I ask you a few questions? Yeah, of course. Okay, there we go. What can you tell me about those wall panels in the chapel? The hangings. They describe the Schattenjäger initiation ceremony. Hmm. Tell me about the Schattenjäger initiation ceremony. Each young man of the Ritterline must go through the ceremony when he dedicates himself to be a Schattenjäger. But what does the ceremony do? I do not know, Herr Knight. The only people present are the old Schattenjäger and the new. But I think it must be similar to a priest's ordination or a wedding. A ceremony of intent and oath. Ooh, yeah. Is there a problem, Herr Knight? You said wedding. I'm okay now. Alright, so I'm definitely going to have to do that if I want to enter the secret library that's just for shadow hunters. There are some words over the locked door in Wolfgang's bedroom. What do they mean? Ah, yes. Wolfgang had me translate it as part of my English lessons. In English it means, Only the purest here may pass. He whose heart is pure as glass. He whose soul is pure as fire. Through this portal passes higher. Great, thanks. I believe those are Doors lyrics. What was that door? Okay. 
Great, thanks. Great. Hmm. Let's see. Is that a shaker of salt? Yeah, salt. Mind if I take it? No. Thanks. Is that a plate of lunch meats? Mind if I take them? That's like the person who like comes into your room and is like, wow, is that pizza? I've never had that before. Can I eat all of it? Gabriel is sure. Okay. So let's see here. The first panel shows hands and water. The second panel shows hair and a knife. The third panel shows a chalice on a table with ocean waves in the background. Okay. The fourth panel shows a knife and a few drops of blood. The fifth panel shows someone kneeling. The sixth panel shows a scroll. Okay, so now that they're giving us clear direction, it's very clear that we're going to need a bunch of stuff around here. So, hmm, let's take a look. Sick. A large handcrafted dagger hangs on the wall. It looks quite old, but it's been polished to a high shine. It's totally badass. All right. It is time to go around and do a little bit of initiating. Here's a puddle. Outside the window, there's a nice thick ledge where some rainwater has gathered into a puddle. Okay, so the first panel said I had to wash my hands. So let's use the puddle. Thinking of the first chapel panel, Gabriel washes his hands in the water. Okay, so panel two had the hair and the knife. So I'll use my scissors to cut my hair a little bit. Gabriel's gonna hate that. Thinking of the second chapel panel, Gabriel cuts his hair. I hate this. <laughs> There. That's plenty. Knew it. Okay. So the third panel was uh, the chalice on the table with uh, the ocean waves. So, we don't have a chalice, but we do have this pot. Gabriel takes the chamber pot. Now let's head downstairs. Okay, so we'll put the pot on the altar. Thinking of the third panel, Gabriel puts the chamber pot on the altar. And since we're uh, talking about the ocean here, we can need a little salt for the salt water. Thinking of the third panel, Gabriel pours the contents of the salt shaker into the chamber pot. Now, we've got a few drops of blood into the chalice. Um, luckily, I just pulled a dirty, old, rusty dagger off the wall. So, no problem cutting myself with that. Thinking of the fourth panel... Gabriel holds his arm over the chamber pot and nicks it with the dagger. Oh, oops. 
Nearly hit an artery. Alright. Now, have to kneel down according to the fifth panel. Thinking of the fifth panel, Gabriel kneels at the altar. And now all that's left is the scroll. Thinking of the sixth panel, Gabriel reads the scroll. St. George, patron of the light, who hunts the shadows of the night. Upon my blood I call thee now. Purify me, for I avow to set my feet upon thy road. Thy sword I take up for mine own. It worked. Something's happening. The sacred vacuum's been turned oh, on. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I know it. I was just <laughs> vacuuming. I did not know you were in here. No, that's all right. I've done about all I can do in here anyway. I give up. You look tired tonight. Why don't you go to bed? Sure, why not? I will clean everything up. You need not worry. I can't believe I cut my hair for nothing. There is a lot of blood and salt in here. That night, Gabriel dreams. Inside a hidden chamber, where I had no right to be, I found the wheel at last, or could it be the wheel found me? Mmm, what a night. I'm sore all over. All right, then. Let's take a look at this library. Near the bed is an elaborate wooden door. The door has a very large, very oddly shaped keyhole. Well, it looks like there's a very large, oddly shaped key right here, just waiting there's for me. There's a key on the table. I don't believe it. It's the key from my dream. Let's see what's in here. It fits. Okay. 
All right, there's a lot of stuff to look at in here. More colorful tapestry softened the stone walls here. On the wall is the image of a shield taking up several stone tiles. However, the image in its center looks jumbled and out of order. Well, let's fix that. Oh, I hate these games. I'm terrible at this. Aaron is much better. It moves. Oh, cool. Maybe I could just put them in places. Hmm, you know what? I think this is supposed to be in the center. work from the bottom up. Yes. Oops. Okay. Didn't mean to hit whatever that is. Starting to look right. Okay. Oops. I guess these aren't quite correct. Let's see here. Okay, so I would need this to be up here. And then this to be mirrored there. And then maybe, maybe this puppy here. Okay. This side's looking pretty nice. Oh, but maybe not. Something should be connecting to that. Maybe that is right. If that's the case, then this should be here. This should be here. Oh, I'm so bad at these. How's that? That looks good to me. Nope, something's wrong. Son of a bitch. Gabriel slides the last tile into place, Oof. revealing a compelling coat of arms image of a lion and a snake that looks familiar somehow. Those With are the not my strong suit. In the proper order, the wall opens to reveal a hidden room. Okay. Let's waltz on in. Um. Behind the wall is a shrine to Schottenjäger's past. Their weapons, trophies, and legacy. A Shot Jaeger trophy room. Fucking awesome. <laughs> Sick. All right, let's take a look at some stuff. You know, it is fucking awesome, actually. A title catches Gabriel's eye. People's Republic of Benin by Lowell Cayley. Gabriel pulls out a book entitled People's Republic of Benin and scans through it. 
The People's Republic of Benin is an area of rich and diverse cultures and a proud heritage. Before slaving devastated many tribes, this area was populated by some of the oddest, fiercest, and most powerful tribes in tribal Africa. The Fons, the Dahomies, and the terrible Agri. The book The Primal Ones by John Roots provides insight into these fascinating cultures. Okay, good. That's good to know. Let's just scan through here and see if we can find anything else. I think that might be all that I need to see. That might be the dragon from my dreams, though. Okay. Let's take a look for that book that it mentioned in the library. Occult books? Geography, archaeology, religion, science, Ritter journals, history. I wonder what that would be. Maybe sociology. There are books on sociology in this part of the library. Gabriel recognizes a title, The Primal Ones, by John Roots. There it is. Gabriel takes down the primal ones and opens it. In contrast with the peaceful, nomadic tribes of northern Africa, certain tribes of the southwest were vicious and xenophobic. This part of Africa is called the Red Basin area because of the vast amount of bloodshed that occurred there over the centuries. In this one area of Africa existed, in a perpetual state of war and raiding, some of the most powerful and efficient fighters the world has ever seen. Why did this region inspire such violent behavior? To understand, one must look even further back. See Ancient Roots of Africa by Early Days. Okay. I guess that would be history books. Gabriel removes ancient roots of Africa and browses through it. The ferocity of the tribes in the Red Basin region is traceable to their predecessors. In Egyptian time, 4000 to 2000 BC, this region was ruled by powerful sun worshippers. We know a little about this mysterious cult by the remnants of ruins far older and of a culture far more advanced than any that exists in Africa today. Sea Sun Worshippers by A. Curate. That's got to be archaeology. These shelves contain books on archaeology. No, no, no. Hmm. Gabriel wouldn't know where to start reading the art. Hmm. Let's take a look. These shelves contain books on archaeology. There are books on... Gabriel recognizes a title, The Primal Ones, by John Roots. These shelves display books on geography. This part of the library contains books on the occult. Necromancy, witchcraft, demonology, lycanthropes... These shelves contain books on religions of all kinds. A title catches Gabriel's eye. Sun Worshippers by A. Curate. Okay. Gabriel takes down Sun Worshippers and scans it. One of the most earliest religious practices was that of Sun Worship. The most powerful cults of Sun Worshippers lived on the continent of Africa. The African sun god was violent and terrible. 
and so became his worshippers. They practice a particularly bloody form of ritual sacrifice. The homeland of this ancient cult is still considered a sacred site of power. See Ancient Digs of Africa by Professor Seymour Shards. Maybe here? These shelves contain books on archaeology. Gabriel recognizes the title. Ancient Digs of Africa by Professor Seymour Shards. Gabriel takes Ancient Digs of Africa and opens it. The most fascinating archaeological site in Africa is the Great Snake Mound in the People's Republic of Benin, located 50 miles south of the capital in the Red Basin. Like the Snake Mounds of North America, the origin and meaning of these great mounds remains a mystery, though clearly they were the result of profound and urgent spiritual belief. Unlike other snake mounds, the African example is a double snake mound, a small snake ring within a larger snake ring. The mound is thought to have housed an ancient temple. Although archaeologists explored the mound site, the interior remains largely unchanged from ancient times. This is partially due to stringent government regulations and partially to local superstition. The local people regard the mound with fear and won't go near it. A double snake ring? Gabriel flips furiously, looking for a picture. Oh my god, it's a wheel within a wheel. Gabriel decides to hang on to the snake mound book. I don't know if you've ever seen serpent mounds, but they are really cool and bizarre looking. And now we've, uh, we've got our information, I do, I do believe. Um, we might have to go to Africa. Guten Morgen, Herr Knight. I'm cooking your Frühstück, a good German breakfast. Please, feel at home. Mmm, Frühstück. Can I ask you a few questions? Yeah, of course. You wouldn't know anything about this key I found in Wolfgang's bedroom now, would you? Key? Why no, Herr Knight. I cannot say that I do. Would you know anything about this riding crop I found in his bedroom? No? Okay. I found this book in the library. I think it might tell us where Wolfgang went. Africa? You think Wolfgang went to Africa? I know he did. Then I shall make you a plane trip right now, yeah? Well, I guess so. Good, good. My poor Wolfgang. You have money for the plane, yeah? <laughs> Can't you pay for the fare? No. How Wolfgang bought his ticket, I don't know. But we have no money left. Have you no money, Herr Knight? Oh, Mosley. I know. We can use his credit card. Terrific. I will go make the call. Then, while we wait, breakfast. Does that mean I can get some coffee now? Off we go, baby. Well, you really get moving around the world in the... the final part of this game. Oh, baby, it's day nine. And then the wheel went round and round. I could not find my way. Twelve and three and turn the key, I heard the madman say. Thank you, I love a good shaky ride. We're within a wheel. You want I stay here, right? It's a long walk back to the city. Yeah, sure. Wait here, please. I may be a while, though. No problem. I could use a nap. Yeah, let's take a look at what we got here. The snake mound consists of an outer ring and an inner ring. 
Two snakes eat in their tails. Relaxing stuff. We have found this snake mound. Um, take a look at the sky. The morning sky is still thick with mist. This is the guy who drove us here. The jeep driver has settled into his seat for a nap. The jeep was one of several private taxis trying to pick up business at the airport. The driver knew exactly where the snake mound was located, and his rates were very cheap. Well, that's nice. The jeep driver can do nothing more for Gabriel at the moment. Okay, cool. I guess, uh, I guess it's time to enter the snake mound. And see what horrors await. Okay, so here we are. Let's take a look at these vines. Six seconds each. Vines, some as thick as Gabriel's wrist, hang from the damp earthen ceiling. Just a mummy, no problem. Mummy like figures and contorted poses appear to be the only residents here. Gabriel wonders was this a burial mound, or does their presence serve some ritualistic purpose? Okay. Here's a tile. On the floor is an etched stone. Let's take a peek at that. This stone looks interesting. Okay, here's a slot. In the center of the wall painting is a square sunken area. Holes about the size of a quarter appear in the wall there. Okay, so the gist here is we've got we've got loose tiles with uh, snakes on them. There doesn't seem to be any writing on the stone, unless the snakes themselves are a code of some sort. So you've got ten snakes here. That is important to remember. Essentially. This took me a while to figure out as a kid. This place is circular like a clock, and you want to put the um, corresponding tiles to fit the faces of the clock. The walls bear ancient paintings, the handiwork of the sun worshippers, no doubt. Is anybody here? There is no answer. Let's start walking. A shadow flickers in the corner of Gabriel's eye. Okay. Ah, so here's a tile that's already in... An etched stone is on the wall. Let's take a look. Okay, so this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I don't think I can remove it. Maybe I can? <clears throat> it's stuck. Okay. So that's definitely where the seven is supposed to be. So let's keep walking. Which would make this room eight, I believe. Grab this tile. And this one. Okay, let's take a look. So that's two, ten, and five. We walk on. A shadow flickers in the corner of Gabriel's eye. This one has a snake rod, so you best believe I want that shit. A long rod lies in one corner of the room. It's shaped a little like a snake. Let's pick up this tile. Okay. 
Let's see which one we got. Six. Okay. Oh, I don't like the mummies. They make me uncomfortable. Okay, so that's three. Maybe I'll talk to him. That mummy doesn't appear to be capable of speech. I suppose that's the case with all mummies, really. Mummy-like figures and contorted poses appear to be the only residents here. Gabriel wonders was... Okay. Gabriel would rather not mess with that mummy. All right. Just keep going and collecting. got very Indiana Jones all of a sudden. Or I guess more the mummy, really. An etched stone is on the wall. Okay, so this one has 12. Okay, so now we know which direction the clock tiles are supposed to move. And I guess I technically have been going clockwise, so that makes sense. So this one would be the one o'clock room. Gabriel has the creeping sensation that he's being watched. Man, Gabriel's a brave dude. I would not go in here by myself. <laughs> Place is fucking scary. Gabriel has the creeping sensation that he's being watched. I think I'll just go around grabbing all the tiles and then I'll come back and place them in the proper spots. So many dang mummies. Ugh. <laughs> Gross. A shadow flickers in the corner of Gabriel's eye. So many dang shadows. I have completely lost track of where we are. Okay, great. We're back at the beginning. So... Let's see. Where was a shadow flickers in the corner? Okay, so of this Gabriel's was number eye. seven. All right, so I'll just go doing it like this. Tile eight goes in here. It fits. I've always liked this part of the game because basically all it is is From counting. Off in the mound echoes a sound like the scuffle of a shoe. Oh, good. All it is is counting, but it gives me a real unearned sense of accomplishment. That doesn't work that way. Oh. So this would be room nine. I feel like in old Sierra games, he would say, it fits for each one, but I think by this point they got a little more like, okay, this is kind of taking people out of it. Honestly, though, I have to say, Gabriel has the creeping sensation that he's being watched. 
if I was walking around an ancient burial snake mound and I had the creeping sensation I was being watched and also there were a bunch of tiles with that fit perfectly into corresponding holes and there were a bunch of dead mummies around I wouldn't go putting the tiles in the holes I'd freaking leave I would just go somewhere else but from such, off in the mound echoes a sound like the scuffle of a shoe. Such is the life of a Schottenjäger. Gabriel can't see a way- Whoops. Okay, so now we're back at the- We're sort of at the top of the clock. So this would be room one. Room two. This is, I gotta say, this is very relaxing. Under the circumstances. Gabriel has the creeping sensation that he's being watched. So here's three. Only a couple more tiles to go. So, whoops. I think... After I do a couple more of these, I will save the game because I think we can all feel something's about to happen. And it might not be great. A shadow flickers in the corner of Gabriel's eye. Oh, did you hear that whispering? It's creepy. Um, although, the sound of the fire, very relaxing. go. Oh, good. A shadow flickers in the corner of Gabriel's eye. Hmm. Nothing happened. Let's see. Let's take a look at this mural. An elaborate mural with a masked design has been carved into the wall in this room. Is anybody here? There is no answer. Perhaps. The snake rod. fits into this situation. The rod fits into the hole in the stone. <gasps> Nothing happens. All right. Gabriel has the creeping sensation that he's being watched. Oh, that's right. Okay. So I had the right idea. I just forgot the room that I'm supposed to do it in. From off in the mound echoes a sound like the scuffle of a shoe. No problem. Okay. I believe it's this one that requires that snake roddy goodness. For the dry dragons. From somewhere off in the mound, Gabriel hears a soft click, then a rumble. Uh oh, I have a feeling that did something. 
Okay. Alright. Alright. I think we're gonna exit to the next room. The bubbies are alive. We're good. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Uh... Uh... uh. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, shit. Um... I can't believe I'm doing this. Boom, baby! Uh, oh shit! Oh Get hell yes! Uncle Wolfgang. In person. Now go to it, boy. I can't hold these creatures for very long, and there are more on the way. Go to what? The secret panel, boy. These creatures are only alive while it's open. Close it, Gabriel, and hurry. Uh, okay. Uh, snake rod here. It's too late for that now. Oh shit! All right, I'll just go. There we go. I think I found something. Very good, Gabriel. Now stand back. He is pretty spry for an old guy. Wow, the inner wheel. Yes, wheel within a wheel. Are you okay? You don't look so hard. I'm fine, Gabriel. The wheel, you dreamt it? Yes, and you? Yes. I must congratulate you on the Three Snakes connection. I had missed it. You will make a wonderful Schottenjäger. Who, me? Yes, it's a long path, my boy. I myself have still the last of my three quests to meet. But let's see what is here. You have found the heart of the apple, but it might be poisoned still. Uncle Wolfgang looks frail and shaken, but determined to make a good impression for Gabriel. Let's talk it out, man. I love you. My only family member, other than Can Grandma. We, we probably have a little time here. Yes, all right. What can you tell me about Schottenjägers? We have not the time to discuss that here. You have started the path. I can see it in your eyes. You must trust yourself and be true to your inner voice. It's a good voice, Gabriel. You'll know it when you hear it. Tell me about yourself. This is not the time nor the place, Gabriel. I am sorry, but I assure you, my life has not been all that instructive. Is there anything else you can tell me about the talisman? The most important thing about the talisman is that it be once again in the hands of the Schottenjägers. Is there anything else you can tell me about Tetelo? I can feel her presence here. I wouldn't be surprised if she knew we were violating her sanctum. People love it when you violate their sanctums. It is like the main thing to do with sanctums. Do you think Tetelo's remains are here? I have a feeling that they are, Gabriel. It's nice to finally have someone around who knows what the hell's going on. I know, my boy. I know. <laughs> Let's chat more. I really like you. Torches light the inner wheel. Look at that table. Yes, it is very old. There is a story being told through the carvings on the side. Can you make it out? A tribesman discovers a snake mound hidden in the jungle. He manages, after much time, to find the secret entrance to the inner reel. In this room, he bows down to a small idol of some sort. The thing is radiating, like a sun. That explains the source of the Gedi's tribal power. They found this mound and the idol in it. Where the idol came from originally is hard to say, but it is definitely older than the Gedi's. The idol was probably once kept in this table, but they would have it with them now. It must be destroyed.
He seems like he's doing well. I'm just gonna turn the music up a little bit. Because this is some rock and shit. The table's lid fits heavily on the base. At the seam, there are two large holes on either side. On top of the lid is a trough. What was the story on this table again? A tribesman discovers a snake mound hidden in the jungle. Check. He manages, after much time, to find a secret entrance to the inner reel. Done. In this room, he bows down to a small idol of some sort. The thing is radiating like a sun. That That's explains the source of the Gedi's tribal power. They found this mound and the idol in it. Where the idol came from originally is hard to say, but it is definitely older than the Gedi's. Okay. Maybe the snake rod? Shall we try this lid? I suppose it wouldn't hurt. Sorry, I'm not... Uh, more help, Gabriel. I don't think it would open so easily, though. Very ten strong men. Do you have a few other frail old men that could help? The lid won't open that way. Hmm. Oh, what are these? On the wall is a rack containing two long iron bars. Sweet. What about these iron bars? Good idea. Let me help you. Perhaps these holes. There. Gry. You know we gotta get that other iron bar, dog. There's no time for leaning. Let's get the other one. Man, poor Wolfgang. He does have rock and hair, though. Okay, um, now what? The table's lid fits heavily on the base. At the seam, there are two large holes on either side. On top of the lid is a trough. Let's try to lift this top. No, it's in there. Yes, it is in there. Oh, I've not felt this powerful since, well, ever. Why won't the damn lid come off? It is a sacrificial table. It can probably only be triggered by the proper use of that trough there. With a heart. Oh, great. Where are we gonna get a heart? Gabriel, you must take the talisman and be Schottenjäger. You perform the ritual and dreamt of the dragon, no? <laughs> yes, I did, but you're the current Schottenjäger. I only did that because... Because you were driven to it. 
I have done nothing with this title for many years. Oh, even in my prime, I had few cases. Ah, no, if, if my life had a purpose, it was to bring you to this point. But I have no idea what I'm doing. It's not a science, Gabriel. It is instinct. And you have it in your blood. Trust it. The castle is yours now. It has many documents and records, which will help you in the future. Well, thanks for the confidence, but what about this table? I want you to go into the next room and get the heart from that dead creature on the floor. Will that work? Doesn't it need to be fresh? Let us try. Perhaps there's some of the old Ritter magic left. Go on. Good thing there's conveniently a mummy here. Guess the dagger? Here we go. Great. My first job was a shot in Jaeger. Cutting up dead monsters. Holy shit. Tentalo, you're gonna pay for this, you bitch! That motherfucker just ripped his own heart out. Why what a badass. No, it's okay. I'm just a little anxious. No, they haven't. I just need to talk to Gabriel. Holy shit. Deep in the earth I faced a fight that I could never win. The blameless and the base destroyed, and all that might have been. Gabriel Knight. Day 10, baby. <clears throat> After arranging for the shipment of Wolfgang's body back to Rittersburg, Gabriel returns to Norlands. He carries with him the Ritter talisman. He has not heard from Grace for over 24 hours, and he could not reach Malia by phone. And although he has some idea of what he is coming home to attempt, he still has no clue where to attempt it. Or does he? Grace, I'm home. Grace? Oh no. Grace! Maybe she just knocked over a chair and left. Who's there? I have the talisman. Yeah? Good for you. Mosley! I got a headache. You! Don't come near me, you're dead! Huh? Oh, that was you at the tomb? You should have said something. You mean you weren't dead, you son of a bitch? Do I look dead? No, wait, don't answer that. I was searching the tomb. When I heard someone coming, I broke the light and got in the drawer. I I'm sorry I brained you, but I thought you were one of them. Christ, you about killed me. I, I said I was sorry. Besides, I owed you one for stealing my badge. If it makes you feel any better, I lost my wallet that day. Your wallet? Oh, <laughs> I, I guess you're right. We are even. Like I said, Anyway, we shouldn't stand out here and gab. Someone on the street might see us. Let's go in back and talk. Well, our uncle ripped his heart out, but at least our police friend is alive. Okay, now let's talk. <sighs> okay. All right, let's talk. What can you tell me about voodoo? Well, you're the big expert now, not me. This stuff is way beyond anything I was looking into at the beginning of this case. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Well, 
You and I know who did them, don't we? But we got to prove it to somebody who'll listen. Do you know anything about a secret voodoo houndfall? Do you know where it is? I have an idea. Great. Let's talk about it when we make our plan. Tell me about yourself. I'm scared shitless. That's all you need to know. I feel you, Mosley. You know, mostly. Don't even start with me, Knight. I've been through too much for you lately. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. What should we do about Grace? Them voodoo people have taken her, the goddamn bastards. We have to find her and save her, and we can't count on the police department for any help. So, fill me in on what you've been doing for the past five days. I've been getting smart, that's what. They got me running, I'll admit. But the day a bunch of drum-banging, mumbo-jumbo, chanting magicians can catch old Lightfoot Mosley is the day I die. Maybe tomorrow. Can't argue with that logic. Now these guys have it wired, I tell ya. From the mayor to a couple of major judges, right down to the beat cops. The Gettys are untouchable from that angle. But once I really started digging, it was like I could see clearly. These guys are into everything that happens in this city. And most people are scared shitless of them, or they don't know about them at all. Let me fill you in on what I've learned in the past five days. Okay. Have at it. Well, Molly Getty is the head of the cartel. Dr. John is her right-hand man. I learned that much. You sure know how to pick him, Knight. She's not really responsible, though. Because during these ceremonies, she's ridden by the spirit of her ancestor, Tetalo. You don't say. It's true. Anyway, I have something, a talisman, that I can use against them. It will help, but they probably still have a power source somewhere in their houndfall. Also, this whole thing kind of ties in with my nightmare, see? And my family history. My family does this shadow hunting thing, and about 300 years ago... Look, don't confuse me, okay? You worry about all that metaphysical stuff, and I'll just try to catch the bad guys. Yeah, you'd never believe me anyway. Let's make a plan. What do you think we should do? We need to find the headquarters of the Getty Cartel, rescue Grace, and dig up some concrete evidence so that I can take this straight to the FBI. Sounds easy. Uh-huh. Do you have any idea where their headquarters might be? Perhaps. Well, you do seem to have a knack for sniffing out this voodoo stuff. Why don't you see if you can locate it for sure? Meanwhile, I got some things I gotta do. I'll meet you there later. How will you find it? Damn, that's right. If I only had the tracker from my office. I have it. Really? Good going. You give it to me and leave a signal device at the entrance to the headquarters. All right. Let's keep talking about making a plan so I don't have to bring up the credit card. What was that plan again? Ah, oh, shit. Jeez. All right. We go oh, yeah. By the way, I found your wallet. And your credit card. Hey, thanks. Uh, you didn't put anything on this, did you? Who? Me? Don't. Here's the tracker. Um, Great. Don't forget to leave the signal device near the entrance to the hound for. And be careful. I didn't go to you Germany too. and Africa. Okay. Bye. He might put that together eventually. There's a note. There's a note on the desk. The note is from Malia. It says... Gabriel, I hope you survive long enough to get this. Tetalo knows you have the talisman. Your life is worth nothing, my love. I fight to save you, but she controls things far more than I. She has taken grace. Return the talisman and leave Norlands forever. If you don't, I can't help you. Please, I can't bear to see you die. Please believe me. I love you, Malia. Oh, man. 
Can I fix this chair? It's really setting off my OCD. No? Okay. Wait. No, I can only look at it. Grace's chair looks hastily abandoned. All right. Let's check the newspaper. Should be relaxing. Times dated June 28th, 1993. The weather service is baffled by the series of bizarre storms that rocked the south yesterday. Twenty died and close to a hundred were injured. The storms only accentuate the bad luck that seems to have gripped the south. The crime rate for the past three days has peaked to unprecedented levels, and there has been 50 reports of food poisoning in Narlins alone. In other words, keep your heads down, folks, and pray that August will return us to sanity. Warily, Gabriel reads his horoscope for the day. Gird thyself with mercy, arm thyself with righteousness. The final hour awaits. There's a school teacher somewhere who's damn confused. New Orleans Times, Monday, June 28th, 93. A season of storms. The weather service is baffled by the series of bizarre storms that rocked the south yesterday. Twenty died and close to a hundred were injured. The storms only accentuate the bad luck that seems to have gripped the south. The crime rate for the past three days has peaked to unprecedented levels, and there have been 50 reports of food poisoning in New Orleans alone. In other words, keep your heads down, folks, and pray that August will return us to sanity. Oh, man. This calls for a refreshing cup of coffee. It's good. Game reminds you, it's never too crazy to take a minute for yourself. Have a nice sip and relax. Mmm, good coffee. You're goddamn right it is, Gabriel. Anyway, th there's a lot to do, but we have to find the secret voodoo hound for and uh, and get uh, the information for Mosley so we can give it to the FBI and we can blow the roof off this thing. Aw, there's no one to say goodbye to. All right, so as he was flying in the plane, um, he looked out at the uh, St. Louis Cathedral. As in, I think it, I know where it is. So let's go Dora the Explorer style. Do you know where it is? Because it's not the easiest thing to figure out. But if you recall, when we went into this confessional, there was a very suspicious looking knot hole that was right here that we couldn't do anything with. So if you take the snake rod and use it on the knot hole. Boom, baby. Something about this knot hole looks familiar. It's moving. I knew it. The entire confessional is an elevator into the voodoo hound floor. Rides over. Okay. So. We need to leave things for Mosley here. We need to leave the rod so he can get in. Gabriel puts the snake rod under the bench for Mosley. And we need to leave the tracker so he can find us. All right, Mosley, there's your signal. Oh, baby. And here we go. I think I've got everything I need. Might as well see it through. The elevator stops at a room underneath the cathedral. <whistles> Express elevator to hell. Those masks look friendly. That piece of art on the wall looks like something the Gettys had transplanted from Africa. 
Gabriel won't solve anything by messing around with the hound for art. All right. Oh, you see the six snakes above the door? That is important. So six snakes is the elevator room. Pedestals display the smaller pieces in the collection. The hound four is decorated with priceless African art. The hound four is decorated. Gabriel is in the outer ring of the Getty Hound Four. The Hound Four carpeting is even thicker and more luxurious than Gabriel's hair. Oh damn! Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So this place is set up just like um, the Snake Mound in Africa. So we can use that as our uh, our guide. I think it'll probably say the same thing, but I'll just check. The Hound Four is decorated with priceless African art. Okay, so here's seven snakes. This sign has seven snakes on it. Hmm, this looks like a supply room. Okay, let's see what we can take. Hmm, this is perfect for Mosley. Oh, I get it, because he's a pig and he's a cop. Got it, got it. This boar mass seems appropriate for Mosley. If he ever makes it. Okay, cool. Got that. Let's just scan over all this and see if anything pops up. Nothing yet. Hmm. No accounting for voodoo fashion, but it'll get the job done. I think I'll take this wolf mask for me. Rock and roll? Oh, some robes. No accounting for voodoo f These robes will make good disguises. Okay, just make sure there's nothing else in here. Okay, good. All right, let's keep moving. I can't remember, but I think you'll get killed if you hang out too long. Check out room eight. It's locked. Oh, all right, we'll move on. See what room nine's got for us. A rather sterile looking bed is the main feature of this room. Looks comfy. Standard lamps made from heavy bronze help highlight the objet de art. A bathroom is provided for the guest, it seems. The Hound Four is decorated with priceless African art. Okay. Guess there's not much going on in this room. Our quest continues. Ten snakes. Thank God this place isn't well patrolled. But I guess how many people would they think would have the snake rod? Christ, it stinks in here. Oh, 
Here are the animals kept for the rituals. Animal cages of various kinds occupy a small room. So this is where they keep the animals they use in their rituals. That poor sweet goat. The goats look unconcerned. At least they have no idea what's in store for them. Not if I have anything to say about it. God damn it, I'm going to talk to the goat. What are nice goats like you doing in a place like this? You poor chickens are history. Damn, that's a big ass python. This snake is quite a bit larger than the one they use in the rituals. Perhaps he's more of a tribal mascot. He's obviously too large for one person to handle. Animal cages of various kinds occupy a small room. So this is where the small cages can Oops. Sorry. The small cages contain tarantulas and rats. Although Gabriel feels sorry for the doomed creatures, he wouldn't get far on his mission carrying around live animals. <sighs> I want to be like Pee Wee Herman at the end of Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Where he's just racing out with all the animals, saving them from the, the pet store fire. Okay, I'll come back here later. Damn, what a drag. It's locked. All right. This feels like real detective work. Kind of scary, kind of boring. <laughs> A rather sterile looking bed is the main feature of this room. Looks comfy. And I guess it's another empty bedroom. Okay. It's a little nerve wracking not knowing what each room is going to be. It's locked. Okay. Ooh, that's the different. The room smells of Malia's perfume. Someone's coming. Tetelo, come to me. Your daughter requests an audience. What is it you seek, child? Tetelo, I beg you again, for my sake, spare Gabriel's life. Do not protect or mourn that one. He will only betray you. Gabriel would never betray me. He will. Has Gunter betrayed me? Blinded by the light, he will despise your darkness. No, I don't believe that. You were betrayed, but Gabriel is different. I... I cannot serve you any longer. Choose another. I cannot go on. Ha! So you say, because you are drawn to the light. What you do not know is that the light will never have you. You only corrupt it when you draw near. I don't believe you. This way, this life is too painful. I must be free of it. You can never be free. You will see my daughter. 
What I have told you is true. You will see. Wait! I won't go through with it! I won't! Man, you'd think Ted Lowe would have just been like, he's right there. It's like, I'm looking right at him. <laughs> Behind the screen is a small voodoo shrine. It might not be wise to steal from the spirits. I think we're a little past that. Hanging above the small altar is a copy of the Getty Veve. Candles burn atop the table, and some offerings have been left there. Gabriel hasn't the heart to mess with Malia's things. A decorative vase occupies a pedestal just inside the door. That doesn't seem to work. A second door leads off of the bedroom. Okay, well, let me go in there, so... Let me just grab a quick nap. Just kidding, let's get the hell out of here. Okay, that's Dr. John. Better to die than run away. I'm gonna run away. Whew, okay, uh, we'll get back to that. Um, we do not want him to know we're here right now. As it turns out, Dr. John was not being 100% truthful with us when he said he didn't know about a secret voodoo hound for in the city. Oh, okay. Probably some good information in here. A portrait of a beautiful, intelligent-looking woman is on the wall. She reminds Gabriel of Malia. Her mother, perhaps? Although Gabriel likes the painting, he doesn't want to carry it around right now. <laughs> this is like what goes on in my head when I try to figure out how to open a door. The whiteboard contains what looks like calculus equations. Who knows what these guys are into? Geometry? Trigonometry? Although Gabriel is no computer expert, those look like high-priced models to him. No expense has been spared in the cartel headquarters. Desk chairs. They look ergonomically sound. Well, that's nice. The Nolan's underworld is probably run from these desks. Gabriel looks at the inbox and sees a black record book. The book looks like an accountant's record book. The cover is printed with the words Getty Tribe. The Getty Tribe record book contains the names and rotted drum codes for tribal members. Oh, hell yeah. This record book might be the kind of thing Mosley wanted for the FBI. It's exactly the thing you wanted for the FBI. Okay, perfect. Um... All right, let's see. The Nolan's underworld is probably run from these desks. It doesn't look like there's anything else to do here. Okay, so that must be what we needed. Okay, so that is just about it. We've almost made the complete circle.
Debra looks at the papers in the box, but sees nothing of interest. A painting of a shadowy figure is on the wall. One of the Loire, maybe? The Nolan's underworld is probably run from these desks. Okay, I guess this is just a... Yep, just an empty office. Other than these sweet boots. Wish I could take those. All right, we have now made the complete circle. Now that we've made the full uh, twirl around the whole place, time to check out the inner sanctum. A few wall panels appear to open. They probably conceal air supply systems or other control mechanisms that support the underground structure. I'm no mechanic. I don't want to mess with the controls down here. Okay. Oh, this is good. This is good. This table has a trough on top, just like the Snake Mound stone table. Gabriel shivers, remembering what that trough is for. Ketchup disposal. Rada drums, like those used by the Getty Relayers around the quarter. The Getty Hound for Potomatan. These panels seem to tell a story. Heck of a family album. Tetelo holding up the talisman. A ship sailing. Slaves rising up and killing their owners. Haiti, probably. Looks like Tetelo's people arriving in Narlands. They accumulate great power through voodoo. The hound for is built under Jackson Square. Okay. So, here's the trick here. When we went into Dr. John's room, I don't know if you noticed, but there was a key card hanging from the ceiling, and I just could not get it because Dr. John's there, um, and he will kill the shit out of us. So now, now that we have the record book and the Rada drum codes, we can use those together. So let's see. Okay, not like that though. We can go play the drums. Okay, I'll give it a shot, but I'm no musician. So. What we wanna do is summon. And then use the record book oops um <laughs> oops let's see how would I do this oh there it is brother eagle okay perfect so summon brother eagle A door opens in the distance. Okay, time to get the hell out of here. <laughs> and now, we've just got to quickly 
get up to his room, which was room three. Okay, real quick. Real quick with the getting of the key card. Because, uh, this room doesn't look like Dr. John's a cool guy, as it turns out. Got it. Okay with the quickness. Bloody machete. Not great. A door opens and shuts in the distance. Oh. Dr. John must have returned to his room. Okay, that was close. Okay, now I can go into the rooms that were locked. Um, I think it was 8, 11, and 1. Okay. So, you know what? I'll do it this way. Hopefully you won't hear that, like, where the hell is my key card thing, like, like a Dennis the Menace kind of thing. Okay. Perfect. Holy shit. How come the bad guys make all the money? Well, that does explain how they've been running the entire city. Gold bullion. Lots of it. These guys obviously have little confidence in the U.S. government. Those bars weigh a ton. But this cash is light as hell. Whoops. <laughs> I love it. A lot. <laughs> Didn't even think twice about it. Gabriel feels a little guilty as he looks at the stack of bills. He hopes he isn't breaking any shot. Of course, Whoops. the family castle really is in need of some serious repairs. If I ever steal a great deal of money... I'm definitely going to use the excuse the family castle just needs some repairs. The bag contains no doubt more incredible wealth. Those bags look heavy, like about 40 pounds a piece. I know it's dirty money, but it's for a good cause. <laughs> Me. Okay. Wow, ain't that some shit. I love that he's kind of an anti-hero a little bit. He's not like, oh, that's not my money. I can't. I couldn't possibly. He's like, yep. <laughs> you got it. They're bad guys. Okay, 11 was locked too, I believe. Whoops. Oh, gosh, sorry. I couldn't even find my key card. There was just a stack of $100 bills in the way. Embarrassing. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Underneath the surgical lamps is a gurney with a body on it. No one I know. Tools of the trade, it seems. These guys have got to be stopped. A stainless steel bucket is on the floor. Its contents are better left unsaid. More corpses are stored in wall compartments. It looks like a deep freeze in there. Wow, that's some Texas Chainsaw Massacre shit. I hope those are rubber masks. They're not, Gabriel. 
Human hearts. So that's what they do to them. But why? Maybe I shouldn't even ask. They're used for some powerful Grigri, no doubt. Or maybe that's what Tetelo has for lunch. Okay. There's a long counter against the wall. It probably contains things every good butchery needs. A small stainless steel table on wheels provides a surface for instruments during the procedures performed in this room. Man, voodoo is scary shit. All right, let's get out of here. I like the money room better. Okay, so room eight is the last one we have to check. Okay. Here we go. Grace. Oh, I found her. It's sweet the grace. The sounds of Radha drums echoes through the hound for. The ritual must be about to begin. Mostly. You made it. <laughs> Thank God. I thought I saw you ducking in here. Those goddamn drums started as soon as I got off that elevator thing, and I heard voices from above. I have the feeling the mass voodooese are about to invade. I found Grace. I see that. Check her out, then you and I need to find a way to blend into the woodwork, bud. You okay, Gracie? Grace is still lying on the bed. She may be unconscious, or worse. Gabriel wouldn't get far dragging an unconscious Grace. Grace, wake up. Talk to me. Grace does not respond. Man. All right. Uh Oh, oh, oh. The the talisman. This talisman is supposed to have some sort of power. Grace, wake up. Grace. What? What's What's going on? Yes. Gabriel, Mosley, where are we? What's going on? We're in the Getty Cartel Houndfall, Grace. A ritual is about to begin, and I'm afraid you're the main cause. Is that what those drums are? I heard them in my sleep. I couldn't wake up. Yeah, makes you want to dance, don't they? Be serious. What are we going to do now? Right. Let's make a plan. What do you want us to do, Gabriel? You're asking me? Oh, God, we're in trouble. Well, I realize that I'm the professional, but you do know more about what we're up against here. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, Grace. They expect you to be unconscious, so you better fake it. That should put you in a good position when it's time. Uh, Mosley, you and I'll be with the other ritualists. As for the ritual itself, I'd say Tetelo's our worst problem. I remember from the bayou that she didn't show up until Dr. John blew that drug on Malia's face. If I can prevent him from doing that, we can keep Tetelo out of it, I think. How are you gonna do that? I don't know. I'll think of something. Uh-huh. What if Tetelo does show up? Let's just worry about making sure that doesn't happen. Okay, so you're gonna prevent this spirit thing from showing up. Fine. I'll take care of the big guy, Dr. John, when the time comes. And I can handle Malia herself. As long as she is Malia. Well, keep an eye on her for her own good. But don't hurt her. Who, me? We'll wait for your signal then. Fine, but you guys aren't gonna get far looking like that. Well, it just so happens I have a very tasteful selection of boar robes and masks. This isn't much of a disguise. They'd see right through us. Oy vey. Maybe I can combine. I'll keep the masks and robes together. There we go. Give the boar to Mosley. 
Yeah, it's a disguise. Gee, a boar. How thoughtful. And what are you, pray tell? Uh, a wolf. A wolf. How appropriate. Oh, wow. You goddamn wiener. I love it. Someone's coming. Grace, get down. What are you doing here? Thought this room was empty. Go to the circle now. shit duh uh duh I need the talisman duh okay eat it Maya Gentilo, stop I won't let you kill her you can't stop me watch your friend die uh oh the talisman seems to have little effect at protecting grace from this distance Get her, Dr. John! Kill her! We must have the sacrifice! <laughs> Fuck you, Dr. John. You have killed my chosen one, witch hunter! For that! You shall pay! <gasps> but first, these intruders shall die! Give me the talisman, witch hunter, or your friends will die horribly right now! Uh, 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 Mosley, you sure, take it. Tetalo. You want the talisman? Here, catch! Ah! Go on, get Grace out of here. The talisman will protect you. What about. Just go. You are unarmed now, witch hunter. Approach me and near. Malia, are you there? She's too powerful. Not if I take this. No! Stop! Smell you later, Malia. No, just kidding, I have to- I have to save her. Although it's two different endings, if you do or don't. But I'm going to. I've got you, Malia. No, you will betray her. Witch Hunter! I won't let you 
Kill her! Gabriel, you didn't betray me. I've got you. It's no good. It has to end with me. No, don't let go. Damn it, don't you let go! Goodbye, my love. No! Fuck. I think it's over now. I'm sorry about Malia. I know you cared for her. You've changed, you know? Have I? Yeah. So are you gonna do it? Be Schottenjäger? I'm gonna try. Don't worry though, you'll be back in school safe and sound. I don't have to go back. There's a lot to learn right here. A spiritual path can be more important than a path of the mind, you know? Hmm. Well, you're welcome to stay, Gracie, just as long as you don't expect me to know what I'm doing. This is a historical moment, isn't it? 300 years ago, the Ritter Talisman was stolen by Tedalo. She used it to draw her family to power while your family withered. Now she's gone and your family's restarting. It almost makes you wonder if it wasn't supposed to happen that way. You know, good coming from evil. You think too much. But really, I think the most tragic thing was all those generations of young women, like Malia, trapped by this large, overriding personality, forced into a life of horror. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of living with you, Grace. You know when I said you'd changed? Yeah? I was wrong. Are you sorry? Nah. Oh, I love that goddamn game. Oh, it's so good. I missed a point. Son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, man. And that is the end of Gabriel Knight. Uh, the first one. Although I guess th there were two more, but they were much, much different types of games. Um, the second, uh, the second game is live action, uh, they, like, with digitized actors and stuff. Uh, the third one was from the late 90s, um, and that had more of, like, a, sort of like an Ocarina of Time kind of look to it, like that, uh, polygonal kind of sharpness to it. Oh man, what an awesome game. Holy shit. I hope you enjoyed that, everyone. Um, I just thought it was really, really special and unique and cool. Um, I've never really seen anything quite like it before or after. Um, I don't know. Full, full credit to Jane Jensen and and Sierra in general for um, giving giving the opportunity and greenlighting something as kind of daring as this, um, certainly at the time, to be created. Here are all the voice actors. They did a great job. Um, the first version of this game had a completely different voice cast, um, like we were saying at the beginning. Much more primitive looking graphics, but just still a really fun game. Um, sad that Malia has to die, but uh, it doesn't work out for her either way. Um, if you if you don't end up going to save her, Tedalo's spirit is just like, I fucking knew it! <laughs> like, I told you he'd betray you, and then the whole place comes down and you're killed uh, with Malia. Um, and then it's just Grace. I think it might be Grace and Mosley in the last scene. And Mosley is just kind of saying, like, sorry. And you can just see how much Grace loved you. And, um, yeah, I guess if you, uh, if you're interested, you can always play, uh, the second or third game to see the 
the continuing adventures of uh, Gabriel and Grace. I, I love them as characters. And it really is like kind of hanging out with old friends after you haven't played this in a couple of years. Did you like it, Allie? I love that. Okay, sick. It um, was very good. Yeah, it's cool, right? A very unusual type of game. Um, yeah. I like a game that's just like a full story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. And, and it, like, it, it feels like it could end here. Like, if you didn't, if you weren't interested in playing the other games, like, um, you could just let this be its own closed loop and you know he's going to be the shot in Jaeger and and continue the work of his uh, of his forefathers and that probably no spoilers but probably he and Grace are going to end up exploring some feelings at some point right? I, I mean, want them to explore each other's bodies <laughs> alright take it easy over there have a cold glass of water it, it's it's the best. I just love it. And that talisman with the lion and the the snake dragon is so badass. I'm sorry I had the the music so low here. Whoa, easy now. Um, let's just take a look at the Schottenjäger archives. Wow, early perspective drawings. That is cool. Oh yeah, that that's what the game looked like the first time around. There's Jane Jensen. She's awesome. I, oh, I wonder how long this is. So how long have you been working on Gabriel Knight? Uh, when, when, when did you come up with the original concept for the character in the story? It was after King's Quest VI, which I had co-designed with Roberta Williams. And uh, I guess that was about 1992. That's cool. I, You can watch that on your own time. Uh, I don't want to make everyone sit through that, but I will definitely watch that because I think... Uh, I think Jane Jensen's brilliant. I think she's got so many cool ideas. Oh, Gunther. You just had to betray Tedalo, didn't you? Oh, cool. I've never even seen this. Oh, I'll definitely have to read this. Wow, that's cool that they put that in there. Okay. I'm just gonna like, real quick, just for, I mean, the episode's over. So if you wanna click off, I, I totally get it. Um, I just want to uh, quit the game and start it over so I can hear the badass music that was really low. Pardon me while I do this real quick. Play it anyway. Do it. They play the music that was at the beginning. Phoenix, you did a great job with this. Restoration. Um, oh, just for all time's sake, one more time. So there's Gunter, there's his lover, Tedalo. That's why he's crying, because he's watching someone he cares about die. But he's fucking doing it anyway. And she kills his ass. Now this all makes a lot more sense.
And this is the music. I freaking love this theme song. Robert Holmes, way to go. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on this uh, fun little 10 day excursion through New Orleans. Um, hope you all have a great one uh, and maybe we'll do another Sierra playthrough like this sometime soon. They're, uh, it's one of my favorite things to do on this show. All right, take care. Uh, we will be back to our regularly scheduled programming. Aaron will be back and We'll be uh, full of high energy and fun times again. And uh, we'll see you then. Take care, everyone. Bye. Yeah. I hate it when cool characters die.